Hello, my name is David Cobb. I am one of the co-founders of Move to Mend, a multiracial, multi-ethnic coalition of groups and individuals who were coming together to abolish the illegitimate court-created idea that a corporation be treated as if it's a person with constitutional rights and that money is First Amendment protected political speech. In essence, we are arguing that we should live in a functioning democratic republic. And what I'm going to do is describe how the U.S. Constitution is supposed to operate. In the U.S. Constitution, we the people are free and sovereign because we the people have the authority to govern ourselves. We the people have inherent and inalienable rights that are protecting our private rights. Government is subordinate and accountable and has duties to the people. That's the way it's supposed to actually operate because we the people are the source of all power. But we delegate a certain amount of our power to government. Do we delegate all our power to government? No, we only delegate enough power for government to perform the duties that we have told them to do. And how do they do it? By writing public policies. So, now that I've written this all out, watch this. One sentence about how our constitutional republic is supposed to operate. In the U.S. Constitution, we the people are free and sovereign because we hold all the political power. But we wisely delegate a certain amount of our power to government, which we will always hold to be subordinate and accountable, and we will charge government with the duty to write public policy and public law at the local, county, state, or federal level. But the one thing that no public policy can ever do is to violate the private rights of the free and sovereign people who live under our Constitution. Ta-da! In other words, the problem is not in the framework of how the Constitution is supposed to operate. The problem is who is considered a person. Because in the founding of this country, only rich white men were persons. The indigenous people were subject to intentional, deliberate efforts at genocide. Enslaved Africans were brought at the barrel of a gun and forced to build this country with slave labor. Women were systematically exploited and oppressed. Most of the white men were indentured servants, so there was a class system. The problem was always around who could actually claim constitutional rights. And today, corporations are claiming that they are persons with rights, even though a corporation should be on this side of the line. What do I mean? Well, think about it. It takes an action of state government and the chartering process to create a corporate charter. The corporate charter describes what a corporation can do. They have to be subordinate and accountable to we the people. The duties of a corporation are a function of those charters and a corporate charter can only exist if it serves the public interest. But when the Supreme Court says, no, no, from now on, you have to treat a corporation as if it's a person with the same rights, it perverts the document. In other words, corporate personhood is a shorthand for the illegitimate court-created idea that a corporation is a person with constitutional rights. And that perverts our sacred right to self-government. And as a lawyer, what really pisses me off, they're using the legal system to legitimize the theft. They are stealing our sacred right to self-government and telling us, well, that's the law, that's the way it is. But we don't have to accept it any more than the abolitionists did, or the women's suffrage movement did, or the trade union movement, or the civil rights movement. It's time to build a democracy movement in the United States of America that says we the people have the ability to govern ourselves, and we're not going to let the majority subjugate or otherwise exploit or oppress the minority, and we're going to treat corporations as the artificial entities that they are under law. It's just that simple.